Okay, let's look at this example 18.1, water and air pressure. Okay, so consider a cylindrical container, cylindrical container, or something like this. Okay. It has a radius of 30 millimeters and is filled with water to a height of 150 millimeters. If the container is at sea level, what is the pressure? What is the pressure at the surface of the water and at the bottom of the container? So, what is the pressure at the surface and what is the pressure at the bottom? Okay, that is the first question. Oh, that's question A and B. And then C is an interesting question. It says, how far above the water, how far above the surface of the water, um, how far above the water surface is the decrease in atmospheric pressure, right, the same as the pressure decrease between the bottom and the top? of the water. So as you move from the bottom of this water to the top, there's a certain decrease in, in pressure. Well, how far must you go above the surface of this water? How far up into the atmosphere must you go so that the change in pressure is the same as that change there? Okay, so that's the third question. All right, so how do we tackle this? Oh, what else do they give us? Um, Mass densities of air and water are 1.2, that's for air, kilogram per meter cubed, that's a density, and 1,000 kilogram per meter cubed. So that's, that's what's given, okay? Density, so rho, okay? Rho density. All right, so what we can do is we can again start with our trusty free body diagram of the water, Okay, so we're looking for pressure at A and B. That's what we're starting off with. Well, first of all, just we know that the pressure at B is atmospheric pressure, right? Which is 1 101,325 uh, Pascal, right? Or what? what is the exact answer that they give? 1.01 times 10 to the 5 Newton per meter squared. So 101,325 Newton per meter squared. Okay. I think I just repeated myself there. Okay, so that's what we know there. But um, the pressure at A is just slightly more difficult, but quite simple. We draw a free body diagram of the water, right? There's the center of mass of the water. And what are the forces acting on this body of water? Well, We've got gravity pulling the water down. That's there. The force of the earth on the water due to gravity. The gravitational force pulling it down. Okay. What else? We've got atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure pressing down on the surface of the water. That's this force here. Force of atmosphere on water. Contact force. Okay. So you've got those two forces acting down. And because it is in equilibrium, the acceleration of water is zero. So there has to be this um, contact reaction force acting up, right, uh, at point A. So this is the force of the container on the water acting up, okay, resisting the pr downward pressure and the downward atmospheric pressure and the downward force due to gravity. All right. So, if we want to find what the pressure is at point A, then we need to kind of work with this guy. We need to find out what is this force of the container on the wall. Okay. So, let's see. But remember, we're looking for pressure, and pressure is a force over an area. So, we know that um, because this is an equilibrium, this force equals, the magnitude of this force equals the sum of those two, right? So this is what we have here. The force of that 
the container on the wall, or on the water rather, is equal to that gravitational force plus the, the force due to the atmospheric pressure. However, let's convert these now to pressure. How do we do that? We divide, we divide by that cross-sectional area of the container because pressure is force divided by area. Okay? So the pressure at A, I'm going to have to keep going up and down, the pressure at A here, pressure at A, is therefore equal to that force. Wait, let me just go back here. The pressure at A is then equal to the force of gravity over A, over, A, over the cross-sectional area, plus the atmospheric pressure. Okay? Okay, so, so this is, that's kind of where we're, where we're at now, right? Okay, so let's just draw this guy down here. So if that's A, uh, so we had this force uh, of the container on the wall acting upright, and it's balanced by those two forces. The one was the force of atmosphere, and the other one was the force of gravity. Okay. So that is, we're saying the force of that, um, the container on the water is equal to those two forces. If we divide by the area, the cross-sectional area, we get the pressure at A is equal to the pressure due, uh, based on this gravity and the pressure due to the atmosphere. Okay, I hope that's clear. I know I'm repeating myself a lot. Okay, but now what is this? What is the force of gravity uh, acting down? So we've already got that this is our P atmosphere. But now what is the what is the force of gravity acting down on water? Well, we know that um, this is equal to mg. Okay? Force of gravity, we know, is equal to the mass of this column of water times gravity. But now what is this mass? Mass, we know, we know that density is mass over volume. So mass, this is equal to density times volume, right? Times gravity. But what is the volume of this column? It is equal to the area times the height uh, from A to B. Right, the height from A to B, A, B, and then multiply that by gravity. Does that make sense? So the force of gravity is equal to A, H, rho, G. A, H, rho, G. Okay? So now we can just say the pressure at A, the pressure at the bottom, is then equal to A, H, rho, G over A over A plus the atmospheric pressure that cancels out and we just plug in our values and we get 1.03 times 10 to the 5. Okay, so it, it is increased from from what, whatever atmosphere was at the top, it is increased from this atmospheric pressure to 1.03. Okay. I think I'm going to stop here and carry on with C in the next video.